Hello everyone, Maurice and welcome to Tanks to Invest, talk about investing, finance, fresh equipment. For today's video, items only. The investment on top of today will be Ethereum ticket ETH. First, I just want to say good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on what you are. And also, happy Saturday, everybody. Hope you have a great weekend so far. Respect to Ethereum, I'm recording some 9.02 a.m. on the Eastern Time. Current trade like the $2,462, down about 0.09% so far. It seems like we're just kind of hovering on a sideway fashion right now on both the international side of the spectrum and also in the you know mainland in the U.S. right now, um, as people are slowly waking up. But I think as people wake up, they're gonna realize that we do have a you know great collections of positive news again that's been percolating for the last you know I would say ten hours so far ever since I went to sleep last night, and I went to sleep relatively early and I slept all the way until eight thirty a.m. This morning so you know I typically wake up at like 6 15 you know but last night I was just so tired because I had I guess like my body was just telling me that oh you need some rest um, that you are really really stretched out and I, I was feeling it because my eyeball was like you know I don't know why but I was like having vision problem at the same time my um, my muscle was aching and my back was hurting maybe walking around the city for the whole day um, so I rent you know I was asleep, like dead asleep, <clears throat> basically, um, and uh, and I I didn't even like get up to use the bathroom. I typically use the bathroom in the middle of the night, but I just went straight asleep, like from I think ten a ten p.m. all the way until eight um, fifteen a.m. this morning. So relatively long sleep, so definitely a good sleep that was needed. But I'm really energized right now, so I'm, uh, I guess that was a good thing. So with respect to uh, going back to the key topic, I went kind of off tangent there. <laughs> so with respect to Ethereum, uh, as I was reading through the news this morning, uh, as I woke up, got cleaned up, obviously. Uh, collectively speaking, I would say there's a lot of positive news, right? And just to keep track, again, like from what media companies are releasing these articles, right? Again, like Decrypt are releasing like a consecutive list of articles, right? So one is um, is this article come, uh, that came out two hours ago on Ethereum yield farm tokens up about two hundred percent in a week after Coinbase listing, right? So basically, this is like a regurgitating news uh, on what have already happened, and it's just basically showing the growth potential that happened historically, but also like the you know the propensity for it to keep leaping up going forward. So the the, the description and the adjective that they use in the article is a little bit interesting. Um, obviously to influence the market a little bit more um, I don't know how you know what was the substantiveness behind the story that we see here this is again more of a regurgitating reinforcement news and then we see something else with respect to coming from Business Insider it came out three hours ago um, he said that uh, the, the author said that Bitstamp the CEO right he says that he's been blown away by the interest in Ether staking right and he also talks about um, his value proposition towards Ethereum and how is that going to transform and revolutionize as we obviously shift to until the London Fork debut, which will, will gear up for the Ethereum 2.0, right? And what is that going to be? Uh, how's that going to be turning out? And it seems like the verbiage in the articles, uh, seems like the Bitstamp CEO is relatively, you know, bullish on the, you know, on the value proposition of Ethereum overall. He does stands for the value proposition for Ethereum as a whole as well. Um, so definitely not a positive news, you know, coming from someone that's a CEO, an executive figure, putting his name next to Ethereum. Uh, obviously, he talks about staking, but he, you know, he also mentions about like the, you know, his bullish uh, thesis and rationale behind obviously Ethereum, right? And then it's more regurgitating news about like the, the Ethereum London fork debut that's coming up uh, and another article from Decrypt uh, and, and basically their predictions on you know the upgrades that's going to be happening and how that will subsequently drive some buying pressure across the board, right? And then um, there is another person, uh, another article that came out um, and this is uh, coming from Decrypt again, interesting. Um, so Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, who's the Vayner Media uh, founder, uh, obviously with his name on it, he recently just paid uh, 3.7 million dollars in Ethereum for a cyber, a CryptoPunk NFT. 
So I guess that's just this just just another name drop uh, that Decrypt is doing again, right? Um, they keep dropping these big names, right? Saying like, oh, this CEO, this founder, this executive member, uh, just use Ethereum to purchase something, or they stand for Ethereum, or or something along the line, right? So a lot of positive news that's been, you know, basically just being pushed out from Decrypt, uh, and I would say that within the last. 15 hours so far there's been four articles that came out from decrypt all positive so far in different color in different spectrum but all you know um are bullish uh supporting ethereum uh you know it's a good thing but also like you know it's kind of regurgitating at the same time right and then um we see another article from coindesk this time and this is uh, coming from, um, uh, you know, with respect to RoboAdvisor, uh, which is uh, the app called Wealthfront, um, offering uh, the Great Scale Investment Trust. You know, the you know the trust that J.P. Morgan uh, is currently offering the five specific trusts, like the Bitcoin Trust, you know, on Grayscale, and also Ethereum Trust on Grayscale, but for both Ethereum Basic and also Classic at the same time, right? So. Collectively, all positive news. And then another one I could just sprinkle on top. And this is another regurgitating one from Bazinga again. Um, basically saying Ethereum uh, may have reversed. But this is, uh, you know, based on the technical analysis we've been talking about ever since on the 21st after the B Word Summit, we've been reversing for a while now, right? So I think this is just another regurgitating news. So. Overall, we have a salad of very positive news today, right? A lot of dressing on top of the salad, I would say, right? Um, and very colorful, very um, interesting how, you know, we see that certain media companies are lo- being a little bit more aggressive into pumping these stories out, right? Specifically for Decrypt, I've just counted like four articles. And then Coindesk, Bazinga as well. Um, so. I'm going to go through a technical analysis to see how is the trends going forward from here, right? Knowing that fact today is a Saturday and then the London Fork is happening on the 4th of August in next month, which is coming very soon. So stay tuned, stick around, let's make some money. Going on to the technical analysis for Ethereum ticket ETH. I'm recording of 9.13 a.m. on an Eastern time. Current trade like the $2,458 level, down about 0.25% so far. Let's take a look at the technical analysis in a more closer frame, shall we? You can see that, you know, we've been just a rock to ship ever since the 20th, which is the B Word Summit. And ever since that, we had that confirmatory news from Elon Musk, Kathy Wood, and Jack Dorsey's. On the stamp of approval for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and even Dogecoin, right? Knowing the fact that Elon, he said it himself, that he's currently holding all three respective crypto, right? And ever since then, we got the pumped up, and then we got some positive news from JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs on releasing, um, and also expanding globally for their adoptions and obviously utilizations for their private clients and high net worth individuals and also institutional investors, on trading cryptos related assets, right? The Grayscale Trust and also, you know, uh, Goldman Sachs currently have the US exposure for crypto assets exchanges, but they could expand that into the European side of the nation as well. So obviously global adoptions for um, the crypto assets as a whole, right? And ever since that, we also had the FOMC meeting, which was, uh, you know, again, right, leaning more towards uh, of a moderate slash neutral positive tone you know that inflation is not going to be happening anytime soon um that the feds is going to be controlling the job numbers which is a high priority and the mandates that they're going to be enforcing going forward that you know quantitative tightening or try to taper or cut off the monetary circulations in the market just not be you know logical at the moment so they're going to be watching their asset purchasing going forward they're going to be watching the you know the U.S. dollars appreciations going forward as we slowly recover, but as you know the COVID Delta variant um it seems like it's percolating again. So what does that mean exactly? I'm not a scientist or a doctor, but you know just with respect to you know seeing people not wearing masks anymore, being people being less cautious than ever. I mean including myself, you know every single time I go to the gym I don't wear a mask anymore. 
And also at the same time, um, you know, during the NBA Finals, I don't know if you saw that in Milwaukee Bucks, the whole field of people that was uh, cheering for obviously Giannis uh, and the team uh, and the Bucks and congratulations to to the Bucks for winning the NBA championship uh, for this year. That no one was wearing masks on the field in, in like a, in front of the stadium, and there was like thousands of people just not wearing masks at all. Right, and people in Miami on the beach as well. Like no one's wearing masks at all. So people are being really, really, um, you know, I don't know. They're just being carefree at the moment. I guess like they kind of pseudo forgot about this, and uh, so that kind of worries me a little bit. Cause like if there's a breakout again and we lock down again, that could hinder the overall market again. But that's something that I cannot predict. Cause I'm not God, and you know, secondly, I'm not. You know, medical officials, and I don't have the statistics on the trends from the hospital that gives me the live updates every single day, right? But something we have to watch out for, and something we should be foreshadowing, and not be surprised from, right? So again, right today, the positive news have been percolating. We have again, right? If you count ever since the twentieth all the way to now, we have like twenty consecutive positive news so far, with some sprinkles of negative news, and on top of the you know, diversifications of the news, most of them are regurgitating reinforcement news, right? Again, these news are old news, but some news are like latest developments that we just like, oh, we're learning for the first time, right? And let's take a look at the, you know, technicals perspective, right? So again, the MACD is, you know, relatively, you know, forming a cross section slowly, which makes sense. That's why you see some red, because I think people are, you know, uh, take an indication of that um, you know we are we can only occur that much buying pressure right the 2450 is a substantive level right but if you break that the next level is going to leap up all the way to again first so you want to go to the 2500 first but the next level is going to go all the way up to the 2750 if you think about that in the historical perspective right you're going to hover around like the 2500 2600 but the next true level of resistance is really 2,750, right? Can we get there on top of what we have already occurred? You know, I think the buying pressure is a little stretched up and needs to cool down a little bit more, right? Because we don't have enough gas right now. We need to go to a gas station to fuel up a little bit more and consolidate and then go back up, right? Because that's just a logical thing to do, right? So would I be buying now, right? I think we should be seeing some sell-off coming. To be honest with you, because like RSI is still overbought, well, not like crazy overbought like the way that we had in the past, but we are almost being overbought, right? Like one, once we get to that point, we just be paying on a premium, like completely on a premium. You are overpaying for for your Ethereum by that point, right? And we are close to that right now, right? So I think a cool down is necessary for us to maintain this healthy momentum going forward. Right, ultimately we are in the business of risk mitigation and the risk is incurring and it's my job and my you know responsibility to indicate that to you guys that the risk is increasing and it's important that you are being thoughtful about your purchasing going forward. So ideally, you know, I would be buying at two thousand three hundred and fifty, ideally two thousand two hundred and fifty. The current level is fair, knowing the fact that we did break that level, right? But how substantive is that? with the historical trends we've already had in the last nine days so far right? all right just to recap all numbers and a technical analysis again right the current level is a substantive one 2450 you know uh and i historically has bought at that level before but remember the historical trends has been very very positive consecutively for the last 10 days now i would say and the news is a little bit interesting right like per our you know we've been keeping tabs on what they're telling me or telling us so far right so the risk is definitely increasing dramatically because there are a couple elements right one is the news media affectation two the technical analysis is screaming overbought and three historical trends has always told us that whatever goes up really really fast comes down just as fast right so would you be want to be paying for ethereum for premium at the moment Per the historical trend, like trend so far, or do you want to be, you know, buying at more of an ideal level to dollar cost average at, you know, in the more of a risk mitigation perspective, right? So something to think about, right? 
Um, but again, if you want to buy it now just to have a peace of mind, like just know that you bought it. Again, that's an emotional tactic. I get it. But just know that you might see some volatility coming, right? Because the chart is telling me so, right? And there is no like expiration dates for when you buy it, right? So something to think about. I know that is a feeling of what you call FOMO. And FOMO is not logical because there is no expiration dates. You can always buy at a lower price. You can always buy at a different time frame, right? You have to go through that cycle, right? Now we're basically at the peak of, you know, not at the complete peak, but like we are leaning more towards like the 75% of the peak of the cycle, right? So risk is definitely higher than when we were at the 1750, which I was screaming at people to, to buy. And that's the reason why I, did, why I bought what I did, right? But, you know, with respect to like long term wise, right? Corporate adoption, 9,800, 4.4 times your money for buy the 2,250. All right, so this is for that respect my technical analysis on your third ticket ETH. Hopefully this is helpful into giving you that clarity, that structure on executing your price level going forward. And also have a great rest of the weekend uh, on Saturday today. Um, but uh, you're probably going to see me again uh, tomorrow. I'm going to be out the whole day uh, just with family. So I won't be recording again. So this will be my only video today. But if I you know, come back for some reason, I I'll try to squeeze one in. But let let's see what, what time that is. <laughs> you know, but really appreciate you guys. Um, and again, you know, please take my advice uh, with a grain of salt, right? Ultimately, I'm just one person, right? Uh, you know, collectively, you know, when we make investments, we seek the diversity of intelligence, the diversity of opinions. So your opinion also is valued, right? Don't just listen to me, right? Take what I say, but filter out. Use your judgment, use your logics, and apply that right execution that's suitable for your risk aversion and the risk mitigation for yourself, right? And also do your research because that's how you are, you know, a diligent investor and not just follow what someone tells you on YouTube. I mean, who am I? I'm just someone on YouTube, right? So hopefully this is helpful and uh, yeah, stay tuned for this. Come up. Take care. Bye.